Hello, Silver Squad, and welcome back to the damn sofa. That's the damn sofa. That's my damn sassy sidekick, Mr. Roscoe P. Damn Coltrane. And my damn name's Paul. And today we're talking about the damn staircase. <laughs> Y'all, welcome to the damn sofa. My name is Paul, and yes, we are talking about the staircase. Not the old one, but the new one. Not the one in this house, because there ain't no damn staircase in this house. We are talking about the Michael and Kathleen Peterson case. So, y'all, this is what has happened. HBO has done, I don't even know, what what do you call these, like a fictionalized version of the actual documentary? Um, either way, I am absolutely loving it. Now, some of y'all might be way more ahead of this than me. I have been buried in the Amber Heard trial, and so we're kind of catching up now. This video is specifically about episode two. And the way we've been doing this, I did episode one. I'm going to create, like, this should be a playlist. So if you're just seeing this for the first time, go back and watch episode one, one of my video. If you want to hear my commentary, and whatnot on it. So I have my phone right here, right? And I've just literally watched the episode, and I pause it, and I make notes throughout. And so for this video, I'm just going to literally go through and be making, reading through these things and whatnot, making commentary along the way. Just doing some sofa sidebars and whatnot. Uh, so that's kind of it. Uh, before we get started, as always, I want to say thank you. Thank you to everybody who makes the Sofa Squad possible. Y'all, it literally wouldn't be here without you. I would not be able to make the amount of content that I do without you being here. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Roscoe thanks you, I thank you, and that damn Sofa thanks you. Uh, so again, I greatly appreciate it. Now, if y'all have not seen Roscoe's little commercial, he had his own little sponsor his own little commercial. I'll put a little card up here, but there's also going to be a link down in the description. Go check it out. It's on my first Amber Heard video that I did, so if you're not invested in that case or whatever, go support our little Ross, our little team mascot, Roscoe. Check out his little commercial. It's very cute. He was very serious about it. Took his little acting job, and it really wasn't an acting job. He was just literally sitting there reading the phone with me. Um, but anyways, it was super cute. Go check it out. Anyways, so let's go ahead and look through this um and again this is not uh, this is kind of, this kind of video right here is like on the assumption that you know this case that kind of a thing that type of situation this is not like a let's go into the like nuts and bolts of the case and all that kind of stuff so this is assuming that you have watched episode two so there are spoiler alerts again this is based on the staircase kathleen peterson michael peterson all that um and again i suggest you start with episode one of my videos because i do go into a little bit of backstory about the actual case anyways there's that let's start so opening scene there's two men the documentary men uh, they're discussing the case and the film and showing how something really is we're shown another scene of the same men discussing other cases trying to deco decide which one to take on uh they decide they call up uh michael peterson okay so i my this was butchered right here the way i wrote these notes i probably should have fixed this before i did this but we like to you know kind of wing it here uh but anyways we're shown in this beginning scene kind of behind the scenes of how they're deciding to do this which again one thing i really like about this the HBO version that we're watching, whatever, is seeing whether this is really how it went down or not. These kind of fictionalized versions of what went down behind the scenes or how this played out, right? And so seeing this where I'm like, wow, this is really interesting. Because this is one of the things where I'm like, how did this even come about, right? Even though I do look back and I'm like, it worked to his favor that he allowed this team to come in. Because if you watch the original footage and the documentaries and all this, when his attorneys were able to go back and pull all this footage and show in court to get his case overturned and all this kind of stuff, I mean, for him, it's like, well, lucky you have all this footage to pull from, right? So there's that. Um, but again, how bizarre for, for someone in that time to allow someone into that space. But thank God they did because it was some of the most interesting watching that I've ever had in my life. So anyways, let's keep going. Um, well, time out. But also to see the decision making on these dudes' parts because as you start seeing in this episode where their decision making, and I mean, y'all, it, it's a no-brainer, right? 
a few conversations with Michael Peterson and you start getting some of the nuts and bolts of this case, I mean, anyone who's trying to make something for TV is like, this is going to be amazing television. And I hate to sound like that and reduce a situation like this town, especially when there's an innocent victim. Again, this is alleged that none of us really know what happened to Kathleen Peterson, so there is that, right? Um... I hate to reduce it down to that, right? But unfortunately, you can we're shown that where it's like, whoa, you know, here's this dude where, oh, there's a little bit of this gay thing going on. Why well, found at the bottom of the stairs, lots of money, lots of this. I mean, this is tabloid fodder, right? So there's that. Let's keep going. Okay, so next we're shown Christmas. A phone call comes in to one of the Ratliff girls about uh, from Germany, and. Uh, She's like, we don't remember our time there. Okay, hold on. I'm sorry. One of the calls comes in. It's about Germany. She's like, we don't remember our time there. And she quickly gets off the phone. Then Peterson calls from prison. So remember at this point, he's, you know, he's not from prison, but from jail or whatever. Um, Caitlin is still in the scene at this time. Um, it, it seems very off. He asks of that Ratliff. He asks for one of the Ratliff girls. Or he asked the Ratliff girls if they've spoken to Kathleen's sisters, and she says no, and Mike says, I need y'all to stick together. So we're seeing in this episode the rumblings of the family crumbling apart, right? Kathleen's sisters, who are Caitlin's aunts, remember Caitlin, it's her, Kathleen is her biological mother, right? And so in the beginning of this, and all, when all this went down, Caitlin stuck by her by Michael Peterson and then that would obviously deteriorate as more evidence came forth and Kathleen's sisters kind of you know got in her ear and that kind of a thing uh, they would be the first to be more or less convinced that Michael had something to do with this and whatnot and so this whole thing of them her aunt and whatnot getting you know into the ears of them and calling up and being like you know what about your mother and this is a coincidence and da, 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 da. that whole nine yards right so we're seeing the rumblings of this and again this is one of those things where for me when i watch stuff like this and the the, the psychology aspect the human nature of how does this what happens with this because so many lives are destroyed in this kathleen lost her life Caitlin lost her mother, uh, the the Ratliff girls, all these other people lost a stepmother, a friend, a, a sister, you know, I don't want to say Michael lost his wife because I'm not really sure exactly how that went down. I mean, technically he did, right? But we're still not 100% sure if he made that happen or not, right? Um, so, but technically, you know, yeah, he lost his wife. You get where I'm going with that, right? So... But there's all this loss that centers around it, right? So there's all these other victims, like surviving victims, I call them. And so we see that deterioration taking place throughout this. So I just found it interesting to see this play out because I was always interested in like how awkward is this, right? That deterioration in this specific setting. So let's keep going. Uh, then we see another scene of the blow pokers being used. Now remember, this is a huge thing in this case, right? Um... One is being used at the sister's home, and then one not being used at the Peterson home. So remember, the blow pokers, this was something that the sisters gave them, gave Kathleen as a gift. This would be like the... Remember, there was no murder weapon ever said this is what it was, but it was like something like the blow poke, but the blow poke was missing. And so then it was found in the whole nine yards, and it was a big thing, but they were like, well, we never said it was the blow poke that type of situation so in this episode we kind of see how the sisters pointing it like oh, yes it was a use the blow poke use the blow poke that's what it was to you know do the the thing in her head okay then we see caitlin yelling at todd to stop blaming it so okay there's another scene here let me finish reading then we see caitlin yelling at todd to stop blaming her mother and saying she was drunk and since when did he start calling her mom okay so there there's that there's another scene we see this taking place caitlin's getting upset saying their mother's drunk, all this type of stuff. And, you know, when did you start calling her mom? One thing that I did find interesting was, because, again, we just saw the the what we saw in the documentary, how much of that was staged. You could tell that some scenes were set up, right? And it, it seemed just kind of, like, awkward and, like, okay, we need a family shot. Because, remember, beneath the surface, there was a lot of stuff going on, right? A lot of stuff. 
uh, in addition to the obvious, right, with Kathleen and that family turmoil. But with his sons, there's a lot going on there with money, that whole thing with his other son and Duke and the whole, you know, explosive thing. And, I mean, there's just a lot, right? Okay, very complicated family here. And so, just a lot. Okay, I'll say it again. So, hearing, like, Todd and, and whatnot and them, like, always calling her mom and whatnot, yeah, I was like, it just always felt odd because I was like, do they really always call her that? Because it wasn't like... I don't know, I just found it odd. And so it was interesting to see that scene where it was like, when did you start calling her mom? You know, and I was like, interesting. Because that too would strike me as odd. One thing that we start seeing in this is how we see the the optics as uh, his lawyer calls it in this, of bring the Bible to you know jail with you. That would rub me the wrong way if I was Caitlin in this. And while one aspect I can get it where it's like, look, if your stepdad, whether you're standing by him or not, is starting to be framed as guilty, there's going to be a certain level we have to present our certain face to the public. I get that. But if I started seeing all these things take place and it's like, well, why are my stepbrother saying this and calling mom mom when they never did? And well, wasn't he just bitching about her the other day and trying to borrow money? And to, you know what I'm saying? It, it would trust me it would rub me the wrong damn way too right so let's keep going um and then the i'm sorry but then the alcohol thing because that was another thing where it was like oh she was totally drunk and all this and that and again everyone's different with how they handle alcohol and this and that and i do think that this show so far is kind of pan not pandering but they're playing that card of creating that doubt of well was she could she have been a little inebriated that type thing is creating that doubt in your mind, right? It has for me at least, like, well, maybe, <clears throat> maybe, you know, because there are, like, you know how there's some people where it's like they have one drink and they are like, ooh, you know, that's the doubt that it's kind of creating in your mind. Well, I didn't know Kathleen, so I don't know. Maybe she was like that. Um, but anyways, let's keep going. Okay, this is the major. Okay, we're showing a scene of Mike at the gym and he's cruising this like hot marine in the sauna, right? And then there's another scene of Mike and Jim Harding talking in the locker and Jim's like, you're gonna keep going after me? Okay, so remember, you know, Mike is down low, right? He hooks up with dudes. And so we see this scene of him at the gym, you know, and this other marine dude and they're like doing their thing in the sauna and then somebody comes in and breaks in. Not breaks in, but just breaks up the whole situation. And so you're like, okay, yeah, he's like, Actively cruising right now. I mean, I can sit here and tell you this like this is you know I mean obviously, you know, it's not, I'm gay So this is something like in the gay world. This is a thing. We know this there's lots of men out there that do this right married guys that go around They have whether their wives know about it or not. That's usually their business who knows but this is a thing right? This is occurs way more than people would like to know and so that whole dynamic, like from my perspective, and again, nobody will ever know, I would, you know, and Caitlin saying my mother would not be cool with this, and then finding that out and being like, um, again, I, I didn't know these people, so I would like to believe Caitlin, you know, over Mike and them, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think I would believe Caitlin, I would take Caitlin's word probably over anyone else's, even Kathleen's sisters. Uh, and Caitlin's saying, I don't really think my mom would be cool with this, like, at all. You know, like, this does not sound like something my mom did know, right? Um, so there's that. But, so this is a thing, right? And so this is showing very heavily in this how much Mike was kind of invested in this world while Kathleen's out busting her ass, stressing out. Mike's kind of living this other life. And by other life, I mean, you know, he's like, okay, well, I wrote this book that was a bestseller. And he's like living in this other world, right? Of, I haven't sold a book in a few years. I'm talking to dudes online, hooking up at the gym. And Kathleen's kind of carrying the weight of the family financially on her stress-wise, all this stuff. And he just seems to kind of be living this like whole other thing over here. Now let me switch back to my notes here because there's another one. Oh, so then when we see Mike and Jim in the same locker room, Jim Harding, that was another dynamic that I was like, wait, so... Okay, I know that Mike was, you know, doing the articles about him and kind of coming after the 
officials in Durham and all that, but were they really like that intertwined like in their daily lives of like, oh, we work out of the same gym? Because again, that would answer to why Jim Harding was so hardcore on, oh, we got him, right? Because I do think that was a dynamic, right? Now, I, there can be two trains of thoughts at the same time though. Mike could have done this and been guilty and Jim could have also realized this and still come for him, right? It's, it's not mutually exclusive, you know what I'm saying? Um, and then it could also be like, well, a freak accident happened and then this happened over here, right? But I can see where the two worlds collide and it's like, oh, whoa. So that was never going to serve Michael Peterson well, regardless if it was an owl or the damn blowpo, right? So let's keep going. Okay. Okay, here we go. Then we see Mike in jail telling his brother he has to tell the kids about the gay photos. And he tells his brother that Kathleen knew about everything. Uncle Bill, pardon me. So then we see Uncle Bill, that's the, his brother who's the attorney, uh, sits them all down and tells them about the gay pics. They are dumbfounded. Uncle Bill says he's always known since they were little. Now, this is a dynamic that I'm not sure about. That's one thing that I didn't know, but I was always curious about. Like, did his brother know? Because typically... That's just something I would think that a brother or, you know, a family member is going to kind of know, like, if their son or brother is, you know, or a family member is swings both ways or if that's a thing, right? You just usually are some kind of hint along the way might have been there, right? And so the brother's saying I always kind of knew, but then we're seeing this being introduced to all the kids of, like, well, hey, you know, here's this other layer to this story, right? You know, your dad was swinging both ways and they found all this gay stuff on the computer and you're not sure it's a gay stuff you know, I mean, you know, I mean, it is what it is. You know, they found some uh, pretty risque pictures there. You know, they weren't naked ladies, let's just say this. So let's keep going. Okay, hold on, please hold. Okay, where were we? Okay. Okay, we then see Mike get out. His attorney tells him about the documentary, guys. Now, and this is, again, we see Mike kind of shows his interest in this. And again, I mean, Mike just kind of... Mike likes attention. Mike is dramatic, right? So then we see Caitlin's dad stop by and talks about the insurance money and says, and she says Mike hasn't mentioned that. And the Aunt Candace keeps calling and talking about things uh, he could have used around the house to do it. Uh, you can tell it bothers Caitlin that Kathleen wouldn't be okay with the bisexual thing. Her dad also tells her about the autopsy photos and then says, come stay with me. So this is where we start seeing this unravel right and again and please hold I got to get a little sip of my coffee here from my Renaissance Fair coffee cup uh, please hold so we start to see this unravel we start to see all this stuff now the insurance money thing again as we know he's gonna end up having to use all this money to keep himself out of you know well it didn't work right but if, this is gonna all go to his attorneys and and, and whatnot. Um, so, but again, these little nuggets that we're finding out through this, you know, I just, I find it fascinating. This case just absolutely fascinates me. Anyways, uh, we then see Caitlin meet her two sisters at the mall and talk about the mic thing. So yeah, so when we see this meeting up thing, now one thing that, again, psychologically that's always interested me with the Ratliff girls is they've experienced loss, right? So their mother, this is my personal thought. If you go down the train of thought of Mike took their mother out too, I personally thought he was having an affair with their mother. That was always my thought. And that something happened and he probably took her out. Do I think he did it with the staircase? I don't know. I mean, I just think, I don't, I've never put that much weight in the staircase situation, right? I just never put two and two together. I just don't think it was his modus operandi, even though it looked like that. I just think it was a coincidence type thing of, oh, they were found at the staircase, but maybe so. I don't know. Um, but I just, I felt like there was something off of that. I felt like he was having an affair with her. Something happened. Maybe he took her out and then he adopted the girls, right? And maybe he found it to be like, well, I'll just put her at the bottom of the stairs. I don't know. But regardless of what happened to her, they've experienced loss. Now, now he is there. You know, they know him and Kathleen to be their, you know, parents or whatever. And so they are... I feel like they have more of a an interest or a, 
an emotional vested interest to stick by him because it's like, where do you go from there? You know what I'm saying? Caitlin has her aunts, her dad, her this, the, the Ratliff girls are left alone. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's it, right? Um, so I always just found it interesting of, we just keep losing everybody, right? And now the man that adopted us after we lost our mother. And I'm just like, well, if we don't stick by him, then we have to also go down the road of he possibly took her own mother out. You know, so it's just, again, it's it, it's a lot. I'm going to say that a lot in this video. It's a lot. Okay. Next. Okay, then this one. Then we are shown the debacle of a scene with Dwayne Deaver getting ready to do his blood splatter experiment. I mean, my God. But then it flash forwards to the day Mike is going to plead his Alfred play and he stops to like a quick stop or CVS or something and Dwayne is the one working the cash register. Y'all, I need to know, is this is this really what happened? Did this really go down this way? Or is this some kind of fictionalized thing? Like, it was Dwayne Deaver reduced down to work at the damn gas station? And did Mike Peterson run into him on his way to court to do this? I mean, that would be too perfect. Surely this has to not be real, right? Um, okay, let's keep going. Um, the scene of the lawyer sitting around strategy, ma you know, making strategy, and he says he can't find anyone to testify that Kathleen knew. Okay, so this is, you know, they're trying to talk about, like, the strategy of Kathleen knew about the bisexual thing, but no one can testify about this. Uh, during this, they show Kathleen's autopsy photos, and Mike's lawyer tells them that they are really bad. So this is where the autopsy photos come out. And David's, I mean, this is what you have to do as a defense attorney, right? You can only work with what you have. And I mean, these autopsy photos are not good, okay? They are not good, right? I mean, poor Kathleen. Whatever happened to her, it's a horrible way to leave this earth okay a horrible way to leave this earth whether she fell whether it was the owl or whether michael peterson snapped and took her out it was a horrifying way to leave this earth and she did not deserve that at all okay at all um just it gives me goosebumps okay um let's keep going here where we are, we? Okay, we see a scene of K Caitlin being interviewed, and the reporter is quoting. Okay, here we go. So here we go. We see a scene of Caitlin being interviewed, and the reporter is quoting an old school paper of hers that speaks highly of Mike. And she's like, "How did you get that?" She basically just leaves. So this is another thing I'm talking about, where it's like, "Oh, how did you get that?" Oh, well, we found this, and that's where it would start being like, "This is getting creepy. This is putting words in my mouth. This isn't adding up. I don't think my mom would ever be cool with this. You know, this isn't making sense. You know, the it." To me, this seemed like a family that was pretty open with one another. They had some pretty major stuff happen, you know, like with uh, Clayton's, uh, you know, spring break and all this kind of stuff. I mean, they seemed pretty open and honest with one another. So for him to come out all of a sudden out of the blue talking about Kathleen knew about my bisexuality, she was okay with this, it, you know, and again, you just, you never know a couple until you know a couple and nobody knows what goes on behind closed doors, right? And I mean, honestly, it's like we have seen it all at this point. So there's that. Kathleen and Caitlin strike me as a type that have a pretty open daughter-mother relationship, right? So that's where I'm just like, yeah, I believe Caitlin and honestly over uh, Kathleen's sisters, right? Because you just never know with sisters that you grow up, you do your own thing, but daughter, mother, daughter, I'm just like, if Caitlyn's saying, I, I don't see this being my no, I believe her, right? And she's saying that this does not seem something like my mother and these bells are going off that don't sit right with her, that's for me a big thing. Okay, anyways. Um... Then we're shown scenes bouncing between past of a fundraiser and the current of experts such as Henry Lee walking through the home. This was a beautifully done scene. This is a beautifully done shot scene of Henry Lee. I met him, I didn't personally meet him, but I saw him at CrimeCon, amazing, amazing. If you ever get a chance, read his books and see him speak, he's amazing. Um, but this scene, the way they shot it of doing the fundraisers and then showing him walking through the house in these same scenes of the crime scene, 
I mean, cinematography, amazing. Amazing. Okay, so at his fund or at this fundraiser, he gives a speech, and they have the dirt. Okay, so we see this fundraiser. My and this is for Mike Peterson's like political campaign thing. That he does a speech, and they have the Durham Dance Company there. And again, just for me being from here and know the Durham Dance Company and it, seeing this stuff, it's just interesting, right? Because I'm from here. Then we're shown another scene uh, of her hearing attic something going on in it. She goes up and falls off the ladder. This had not been a theory I had heard of of someone being in the attic and intruder, right? I had not heard of this one. And so this is brought up multiple times. She, her climbing up the ladder, falling off. There's a lot of her falling down and sliding and hurting herself and being like kind of klutzy, if you will. So again, this is just another avenue that the filmmakers do in this of showing us potential things, right? Um, then we're taken to December 9th, 2001. Hanging by the pool, she goes in. Okay, so this is, this is big. Um, she goes in, she took a pill, she goes upstairs and falls and just passes out. Then comes up with major blood. It basically goes down the way the team says, and it's horrifying. So they walk us through what Michael Peterson says happened. And it is horrifying to watch. And watching it, and, and the, the, not only the way that Michael Peterson says, but the way that Dr. Lee says, of this is what would have happened. We've seen, like, the you know, the way that he showed it with the little figures, the computerized version, but seeing an actor, an actress play this off and do this, a human being do it, it, I mean, it gives me goosebumps. It is horrifying. And again, let's say that somehow by a freak accident, that, that's what happened. What a horrifying way to go. What a horrifying way to leave this earth, right? No one deserves that. I mean, it was just terrible. 100% I do not think that that's what happened at all watching this. And I get this is a fictionalized version. It's not really what went down. I absolutely do not think that that is what happened. Just even the first fall of it. And I could go for a version of that happening, right? I could go for that. The slipping and the hitting the head and coming back... But seeing how she did that, it was so dramatized. And I guess that's the thing. It would have to be for me to believe it. But it was almost like even to make it work on TV, it was almost like you had to make it that overdone. And that was just the key word there, overdone. But watching that, it was just, you know, I, I, I wasn't believing that. I was like, some, there's something missing. There's something not adding up here, right? Um... I don't, I don't know. I mean, I just still now, I just, it absolutely baffles me. And where my thoughts were going when I just zoned out there is my thoughts just went to, I just, you know, for the life of me, I'm, I'm envisioning Michael Peterson with something in his hand striking her. You know, and I'm trying to wrap my mind around that and envisioning him doing that and what the object could be. And at the same time, this person professing his love to her as much as he does and just trying to wrap my mind around that. And I just, I have such a hard time wrapping my mind around every scenario, even though for me, the most likely one is that he did something of this flavor to, you know, to that, right? So the scene, again, you know, it's terrible, it's horrible, and we see this crazy amounts of blood. And I guess that's one of the things that I just have a hard time imagining is because I guess from the fall and seeing her get up and then the, the the multiple falls and the coughing of the blood and all that I have a better time thinking that she was attacked and that kind of a thing was happening of someone being there while that was going on that type of situation right anyways um let's keep going so after that we're showing the current time of the defense team around a table discussing this they say they aren't going to mention the thyroid bone because that doesn't happen falling down the stairs so that's another thing of like eh, you know they're lining up now there's going to be things in the other episodes that we'll talk about of potential answers for the thyroid bone that i'm like Hmm, never thought about that. You know, but as far as just this episode goes, it is like, yeah, there's other things that take place. It's like, uh, you know, <laughs> okay. Um, you know, what do you say to that, right? Um, and I've often wondered this too. Like when I try and wrap my mind around 
if Michael Peterson did it. And I know I keep coming back to that. Uh, but I'm just like, well, what if something happened and he hit her head? Like, say he was doing her head on the staircase itself. So there wasn't really an object. And it was enough to do her head like that to crack it open. Um, or he pushed her head and then, you know, almost was making it do that itself or whatever. Like, you know, hitting her head himself or whatever. I don't know how to say it. Um, I don't know. I just, I, I just, I just, I cannot for the life of me. It, the whole thing baffles me, right? Because then when we, and we haven't gotten to the owl part yet in this series, and I can't wait to see how they reenact that. Um, because that part too, I just, I don't know. And I go back to just how much he is stuck by, which I mean, he, he did, just because somebody denies something and sticks by it, I mean, who isn't going to do that, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like they're going to wait till it's all over with. Well, now I can let the charade down. You know what I'm saying? Which technically, I guess he could at this point if he wanted to, right? But, I mean, who's going to do that? Anyways, let's keep going. I could just, I'll get wrapped up in that forever. Um, okay. Um, okay. So then we're showing a scene of Caitlin and her father going to see the autopsy photos. And again, this kind of seals the deal for Caitlin, right? Um, now, one thing that I think is interesting with the scenes of Caitlyn is she seems to kind of see through Jim and Frida's dramatics and, like, their skeezy attorney vibe uh, because they do kind of seem to have that, even though I think that they make for good television, them as, like, real people. They're kind of like... I feel like Caitlyn kind of sees it like they're trying to get this reaction out of me. I don't like that. I'm going to come to this conclusion myself, and they're trying to get this rise out of me, and I 100% agree with her, right? And I like that she sees seems to see through that in this okay okay then it takes us to what most of us know as the they they're showing the beginning filming of the documentary so we're watching a documentary within a documentary right and they're filming this the pool scene that and we're seeing kind of how that went down and what it was like to film with him and i mean this was very interesting to me because i was like what was he like when the cameras turned off right like was he a monster like because again we have to remember this is somebody who has been accused you're going into someone's home the staircase is boarded up full of blood right a crime scene they're claiming they're innocent. This major trial is going on. Like, all this stuff, right? And this dude has allowed you in the home, and you're walking through these reenactments. And, I mean, come on. Like, it has to be weird. And, again, I think anyone, and I think that they show us this, just talking to him and watching him talk and interact, there's, like, something off with him. There's something unsettling about him. And I think it's what makes him kind of interesting for TV, kind of creepy, kind of like, uh, you know, like what's, what's off, like something's not right, you know what I'm saying? So there's that, so let's see what else. The last scene is Candace going off with a blow poke, so there's that. So I mean, Candace has been a very major advocate for her sister, this is a good thing. This is what victims need, right? Um, and I mean, she has been there all the way through this. It, here's the thing that happens in these cases, it's very frustrating. And you know, when Durham dropped the ball on this with Dwayne Deaver and all this stuff and yada yada yada, you know, it drags the families through this whole debacle over and over and over and over even if michael peterson like say it was up for pro i mean it's just the families get re-victimized to these cases for the rest of their lives right through legal processes and so i get it right and so then to have to do this where can't regardless of what any of us think happened candace a hundred percent it is Michael Peterson took my sister's life and he is walking free, right? You're not going to convince her differently, right? So that's her truth. And so, you know, she's pissed, right? She's pissed. And so, rightfully so in her world. And so it's showing kind of that level of, you know, anger in the beginnings of it, right? Of like figuring out like he did the blow po, right? So there's that. Um, so again, two thumbs up on this episode for number two you've got to watch this right um i'm gonna watch number three i've just been busy with work the amber heard trial that's almost over with my 
God, I almost can't wait for it to be done with at this point. I feel like I've been living with a, you know, I've been living with Amber Heard and Michael Peters, oh my God. Anyways, let me know what you think about episode two. Let me know all your thoughts on it. Drop in the comments. Um, if you're still watching here, drop some paw prints for Roscoe and some sofas for the Sofa Squad, y'all. Thank you for hanging in there. Again, thank you for making the channel possible. Let me know who do you think did it? What do you think happened to Kathleen? Drop some hearts down there for her. And until we meet back at the damn sofa with damn Roscoe and my damn name is Paul. I'll see y'all soon.